So I haven't updated this deck in a year and I thought now was actually a really good time to do so. Why it's a good time to do so? I don't know, but you're watching this video, so I'm sure you thought it was a good time to update it too. But the deck that I'm showing you guys today is Malefic. It's an anti-meta beatdown version of the deck. It's essentially a stun deck with big beater monsters, and you're going to be able to push for game while really stopping your opponent from pretty much doing anything. Now, if you enjoy these kind of videos, these kind of rogue decks, let me know in the comment section down below, because I do also have an OTK version of this deck, and if you guys want to see that, let me know as well. But all these other rogue decks, all these other unique decks that not a lot of people talk about here on YouTube, I think it would be really fun to update especially because I used to do so many of them on the channel don't do them much anymore so I think it'd be really fun but with that being said I don't want to take up too much of your time let's get right into today's Malefic deck profile all right, so no matter how you look at it, Malefic is definitely a rogue tier deck. It's a very fun deck to play, but the really cool thing about Malefic is it's actually very budget. Now, the reason it's budget is because you have cards like Prosperity and Baron that were just reprinted in the rarity collection, and you guys can pick up a lot of these staples now for a really good price. And that's why I really like this deck because it's very fun, it's very budget, and if you are a casual player just looking to have some fun and or just take it to your locals and catch some people by surprise, this is a very fun deck to play. Now, let's get into it. We are playing three of the Malefic. Paradigm Dragon. Paradigm Dragon is very important for a lot of reasons. One, it's a 4,000 beat stick for you, and being a 4,000 beat stick means that it's exactly what this deck wants. This is an anti-meta build of the deck. It's a build that really wants to stun your opponent and then just beat them down with big monsters, so Paradigm Dragon does that for you. The other thing is, it's a Foolish Burial, so once per turn, you can send a Malefic card you control to the graveyard, and then you can return one of your banished level 8 synchro monsters to the extra deck. Why is that really important? Because you can now put back stuff like your Stardust Dragon to reuse it again. So that's why I like Paradigm Paradigm Dragon is really powerful in that sense, so you need to be playing three of this. We're also playing three Cyber End Dragon as well as three Stardust Dragon, the Malefic versions. And the reason we're not playing Malefic Rainbow Dragon or Malefic Blue Eyes, we don't want bricks in the deck. We don't want a brick rainbow dragon. We don't want a brick vanilla blue eyes. That doesn't really do anything for you. We want to make this deck as consistent as possible. There is kind of a way around it. I'll talk about that later. But again, you don't want to risk not having the right cards in your hand to be able to actually do what this deck wants to do, right? So three cyber end, three Stardust dragon, pretty much vanilla monsters for you. They don't really do much other than being beat sticks. Stardust dragon, of course, is really powerful as well, though. It does have a kind of effect where your field spell can't be destroyed. And that's really good because this is a field spell based deck. On top of that, Stardust dragon and cyber end dragon they use cards from your extra deck so does paradigm so again no bricks with these ones and that's why you want to be maxing out on the ones essentially that are not going to clog up your hands right so three stardust three cyber end three paradigm then we're playing three of the malefic parallel gear as well as three of the malefic paradox gear now parallel gear is really powerful for you because it's a level two tuner which gives you access to your level 10 synchros with your stardust but it also gives you access to your level 12 synchros with either malefic cyber end or malefic paradigm right so that's why i like playing the parallel at three paradox also at three is very important now paradox what it can do is if there is a face up field spell you can tribute it to special summon a parallel gear from your deck and then you can add a malefic monster from your deck to your hand so if you don't have a stardust if you don't have a cyber end you can search the malefic monsters to your hand you can even search paradigm as well which is really nice right now this card has a second effect where essentially if you're going to be summoning one of your malefic monsters using its own effect aka using the cyber dragon banishing a cyber dragon summon it you can actually use this from your field or graveyard as well and banish this instead now you guys might be wondering okay well if you can use this then why don't you place the rainbow dragon why don't you play blue eyes because you can just use this card instead of the cards in the main deck however the problem with that is it requires setup it requires this to be in the graveyard it requires you to have rainbow dragon in your hand so if you do have the malefic rainbow dragon in your hand and you don't have this in the graveyard, it's a brick for you. I wanted to avoid any situation where you can break, especially with a rogue deck like this one. You need to make it as consistent as possible. So for that reason, that's why we're not playing Malefic Rainbow Dragon. That's why we're not playing Malefic Blue Eyes, because it's a specific setup that you need. Whereas with these cards, there's no setup needed. Banish the Stardust, Banish the Cyber End, boom, slap them on your side of the field, right? So very powerful in that sense. So that's it for the Malefic Monsters. Then for the spell cards, we are playing three of the Malefic World. Very important card in this deck. Most important card in this deck, I would say, actually. It also has a cool effect. Instead of drawing, you can reveal three Malefic cards and then your opponent randomly picks one that adds up to your hand. That doesn't happen too often, but it can come up, which is really powerful as well. One Terraforming to get to your field spell. One of the Malefic Divide. This card is really powerful because you can target a Malefic Monster in your graveyard, special summoning, ignoring its summoning conditions. And that's really powerful because it's a quick play spell, which means you can use it in the battle phase to try to go for game a lot of the time. So one Malefic Divide, three Malefic Selector, as well as three Malefic Territory. Now I'm going to go through Selector real quick. Essentially, you banish two, add two. It's a card that gets you 
through your deck. Very important for your consistency. But the most important card is Malefic Territory. This card does so many things for you. So the first thing it does, and that's why we have to max out on it. The first thing it does is you're going to be able to activate a Malefic World from your deck as soon as you activate this card. So that's really important because you get to your field spell and that's the most important thing for this deck. Now there's two other effects that are really important. One, it changes the effect on Malefic Monsters. If you guys didn't know, I didn't mention this earlier, but your Malefic Monsters essentially say there can only be one Malefic Monster on the field. However, this changes the effect to there can only be one Malefic Monster with the same name on the field. And why that's really important is because before this card, you can only summon a Cyber End Dragon. And if you had a Stardust Dragon, sucks it's stuck in your hand because you can only control one Malefic Monster. However, with this card, it means that you can summon a Cyber End Dragon and summon a Stardust Dragon and summon a Paradigm Dragon because they're all different names. Now you can't summon two Cyber End Dragons. However, being able to have multiple Malefic Monsters on the field is very important for territory. And it has a third effect. The third effect, the most important one, or I guess they're all very important, but very important as well, is that during the battle phase, your face up Malefic Monsters effects are negated. And why is that really important? Because they also all have the effect where only this monster can attack. So if you summon Cyber End and you summon Stardust, Cyber End said other monsters you control cannot declare an attack. Stardust also says other monsters you control cannot declare an attack. So what happens when you have two of these on the field is you can't attack because both of them say only this card can attack, but territory negates their effects during the battle phase, which means you can attack with all your malefic monsters now. So that's why territory is so important because you need to have this card on your side of the field to be able to facilitate a lot of your plays, right? So three territory is a must. It's a mandatory card. We're also playing three pot of prosperity. Now you guys might be wondering, Spanko, why are you playing prosperity? It's going to half the damage you do. And these are big beaters. Isn't the whole point to OTK your opponent? Yes and no. So because these are big beaters, obviously you're going to want to play a beatdown style. And if you have situations where you know you can OTK your opponent, you don't have to activate Prosperity. However, Prosperity is very important because it gets you through your deck and gets you to cards that you really need to be able to stun your opponent. Because the whole point of this build is it's an anti-meta beatdown version, right? So being able to use Prosperity, one, gets you into all of these consistency pieces because if you don't see a territory, right, you're kind of stuck. So this helps you get into your territory, but it also get, helps you get into your skill drain and goes in match. If you guys didn't realize, all these monsters are dark. Works really well with Gozen Match, and a lot of decks just fold to Gozen in this format. And then Skill Drain, of course, it's a beatdown deck. If you just Skill Drain your own monsters, who cares? They're 4,000 beat sticks. This one's 2,500. You're just trying to push for damage anyway. So Skill Drain does not affect you in the slightest, and that's why I like playing the three Skill Drain, three Gozen Match, and Prosperity helps you get to that. One card I didn't talk about is Call by the Grave. We're just playing the one Call by the Grave because it's, you know, it's Call by the Grave. Stop a hand trap. It's really good in different situations as well. Call by the Grave, very powerful card, right? So one Call by the Grave, three Skill Drain, three Golden Match like I just talked about. And then I do like playing the Bestial Package. We're playing the one Magnum as well as the three Druid Swarm. The reason I like playing this package is one, Graveyard Heat is pretty, you know, relevant in today's format. I think that's pretty nice. Now, while this isn't great into every single matchup, the really cool thing about this is it puts another body onto your side of the field. And in tandem with something like Territory, where it negates these guys' effects during the battle phase, you get more bodies on your side of the field that you can use to push for more damage and try to OTK as well, right? So I really like the Beast Seals for that sense. Now, the really cool thing about this deck is these four cards over here, you can kind of swap them for what you want to swap them for. If you guys want to play hand traps instead, you guys can play hand traps instead. But again, I think the Bastilles work so well. They're darks. They work with Gozen Match. Magnemut can technically search a Druid, but it can also search a Malefic Stardust Dragon or a Paradigm Dragon as well because it searches any dragon in the end phase. Being able to search these as well for you is really powerful. And then, of course, Druid Swarm, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can use its effect, of course, to clear a card your opponent controls as well. So that's why I really like the Bastilles in this deck. But that's it for the deck. It's a 40 card main deck. Very precise, very consistent. You need to get to your pieces over here to get all of your combos going right so 40 cards in the main deck then for the extra deck essentially it's just cards that you're going to dump off of your monsters over here and cards that you can make with the level two synchro right so we're playing two of the paradox dragon this is a card that you can send for your paradigm dragon to stardust dragon to send for your stardust dragon to cyber end dragon to send for your cyber end dragon i know i sound like a broken record here but that's really what these six cards over here do then we're playing the one geo mathmec final sigma a card that can kind of help you sometimes go for game which is really nice it's a level 12 if you use your level 2 plus a level 10 over here one of these two then you can make this you can also make baron and or chenging to help you otk baron is another form of disruption with your level 8 over here so you guys can see that these cards are all just cards you're really not going to go into very often but when you do they are really powerful so baron chenging we're playing the one time lord uh vorp gate i think i'm saying that right this card is just a funny card that you kids can make it's a level 10 synchro it doesn't come up too often a lot of the times i just banish off prosperity but there's not a lot of really great dark level 10 options for you and that's why i really like this because you can make this under goes and match as well other than these ones like these ones here are not dark so you can't really make them but this you can make under goes and match if you're even making it to be honest with you right but then we're also playing two of the gustav max as well as the two lieb and Liebe is really powerful because it's going to help you otk as well if you're able to make this and the way you're able to make this is using two level 10s to make gustav max gustav max burn your opponent 
slap this on top. And the really cool thing about this is that if you have a Cyber End Dragon and a Paradigm on your side of the field, and you also have a Paradigm and Cyber End Dragon in your hand or one or the other, you can slap these two on top of each other, make a Gustav Max, make a Lieb, and then now you can summon the other name, right? Again, which is really powerful. So I like playing two and two. The reason I like playing two and two is a lot of time you're just going to banish one of them off of the Prosperity anyways. So it's just Prosperity fodder. And then of course, one Zeus if you're not able to OTK with these cards over here. But again, the extra deck is so flexible. I would say other than these six cards, maybe the Sigma one and one for sure. Like it's a very flexible extra deck. So whatever you guys want to play in here instead. And then I also want to talk about a side deck. Now keep in mind, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. However, the thing with the side deck is I just want to you know kind of get into a little bit of everything be able to compete against combo be able to compete against back row however if your locals is filled with combo players side for combo if your locals is filled with back row players side for back row this is just a skeleton that you guys can use to build your own side deck so we're playing three of the gamma seal one harpy's feather duster as well as two lightning storm and then three evenly matched i think this is just a very generic skeleton over here that you guys can use in pretty much every deck unless you're playing a specific otk deck where you don't want to use evenly match but evenly match is so good in today's meta these cards again as well are also really powerful in today's meta this i mean kaiju's i just personally really like i just think it makes a lot of sense especially with this deck it's so easy to get over a kaiju so if your opponent has a troublesome card that you don't want to deal with bam slap a kaiju on top of it right and then for going first we're playing 3d barrier as well as three solemn judgment the reason i like playing 3d barrier is because again this is an anti-meta beatdown deck and against certain strategies that are synchro summon based or ixy summon based or even pendulum based if you're able to just stop them with the barrier you're going to be able to win a lot of games very quickly with this card right so 3d barrier as well as three solemn judgment but that's it here for the deck guys that is malefic now i also have an otk version of the build this is the anti-meta beatdown version of the build but if you guys do want to see the otk build let me know in the comment section down below so that is it for today's video. Thank you guys all for watching. That is my take on Malefic for the December 2023 format. Now this deck is essentially a rogue deck that it really focuses around its big beater monsters and then its floodgates to stop your opponent from playing. Now this deck, of course, again, like I said, it's a rogue deck. You're not gonna take this to a YCS and win with it, but it's a very fun deck to play. It's a very budget deck to play and it can catch a lot of people off guard, which is really nice as well. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu Yu content just like this one. We are uploading every single day day in the month of December. We're almost at 16,000 subscribers, which was the goal for 2023. I appreciate every single one of you for making it happen. Well, it hasn't happened yet, but for almost making it happen, I know it's going to happen soon. Thank you guys all for doing that. I appreciate all of you guys. I said that already, but I really do appreciate all the support and love that I've been getting. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, thank you. Signing out. Peace.